Let's talk about the elephant in the room. I'd really like to introduce the concept of stay to him. How am I ever gonna teach him to let go of something when his grip and his strength is like this? Indy is not slowing down. She can throw down with a pit bull type dog any day. I'm Zach George, and this is George. No relations. George has spent the last four months living in an animal shelter with minimal contact with other dogs or people. And it's my job to transform him from a wild and crazy dog to an incredible pet. Seems straightforward, right? Uh -uh. Holy cow. Not getting that ball. George is a dog like I've never known before. I don't know if I can let this dog go. Let go. This might be the single greatest transformation I have ever seen in a dog that I've worked with. The hardest thing about fostering a dog, you fall in love with them. This is reality dog training. George, come here, come here. Hey, you, it's, buddy, come here. Come on, over here, we can't, no, we can't do that. Like, don't you remember Leave It? It's like our training didn't work at all. What's going on here? Uh -huh. Let go. George is exactly the kind of dog that can go one way or the other. If you really channel his energy into the right activities, he's gonna be amazing. But if you let a dog like this go untrained, you could have some issues on your hands. Sit, how about that? Good, now you're not thinking about chewing the rug at all, right? Good. I have such a special meal for George this morning. I've been training dogs a long time and it's amazing to see how far some dog foods have come. In some cases, it's actually indistinguishable from human food. But of course, dogs have different dietary needs than humans, which is why you wanna be very knowledgeable about dog nutrition before you attempt to prepare food for your pet. But if a PhD in pet nutrition sounds like a little bit too much work, then Nom Nom has done that work for you. And for maximum nutrition, all of their recipes are prepared at low temperature. Temperatures. And every meal is pre-portioned down to the individual calorie for your pet. Leave it. His leave it's looking pretty good, guys. He's never had anything like this. This is gonna be so fun to watch. Okay, I'm gonna make him wait much longer. Oh boy, he's enjoying that. Look at his tail. If you think your dog's gonna love Nom Nom as much as George, you can try it. Get 50% off of a two-week trial by going to trynom.com slash Zach. I don't know, do you think he liked it? It's day two with George and we are not wasting time. We're gonna introduce four critical skills to him right now today so that we can get his training going fast. Fortunately, one of the things I had planned for George, he already knows, and that's a basic sit. However, he doesn't appear to know how to lie down when he's asked or how to stand up on all fours when asked. He is doing a great job of ignoring these bikes though. Check. Let me first make sure that I can get his attention. Right now, he's not too tuned in to me. Hey, George. Yes. Now remember, he does no sit. Good job, sir. Sit. Now we need to teach him how to lie down. And we're gonna teach him how to lie down by luring him down. I'm using some freeze-dried salmon treats here. Do you see right there what I'm doing with the treat? Putting it right at his mouth, letting him lick it, and yes! Good boy, good, yes. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce that down. He went right into it. I tried that with him yesterday, loosely, like two, three times to make sure, but that is actually his first lie down that I've seen him do. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe and click the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. Little reluctant there. That's okay, that's okay, buddy. Here, sit. He's very responsive to the Lord. You see how he's looking at that treat wherever I put it? Well, almost anyway. Yes. Good. I think the biggest mistake people make with lure training is they attempt to do this with the dog. They go like this and expect the dog to figure it out. But in the beginning, you wanna go real slow and keep their interest. Yes, just like that. So boy, you are catching on. Now let's see if we can get them back up here. George. If a lure wasn't effective, I could call him. Yes, the fact that he just came up, good boy. Nice job, okay but he still has some work to do on this. I don't know that he's fully getting it yet. I'm gonna to continue to work with him. I kind of feel like he's dying off a little bit, but looks like he's discovered my tug toy over there. So I might try to use that as currency. See how well he does. Here we go, good boy, hey. Oh boy, boy, look at this attention on the toy. Nice, okay. See how he's doing on let go. Easy, hey, uh-uh, whoa. Sit. Yes, good. Continuing to use the tug toy as currency here as well. 
So when he does something I like, I'll go ahead and reward that. We've been continuing to work on basic impulse control a little bit, but he still has a lot of work to do. I mean, he's going after this rope. You can understand why he loves it and he doesn't quite understand that he should leave it alone. Let's see how well he's doing with leave it. Let me see if I can apply it to this. Ah, leave it alone. Yes, good, good boy. I'm pretty satisfied that he's starting to generalize to leave it a little bit. Okay, let go. We have to get a better let go though. Uh-uh. Let go. Good boy. But I'd really like to introduce the concept of stay to him. Now you might remember we can break down stay in three categories. Stay for a period of time, stay with distance while we walk away, and stay while distracted, maybe for a toy. I don't know that he's ready for the last version of stay, but I'll play that by ear and see how he does when we get there. All he wants to do is play, but we have to show him he's gotta earn that. I'm gonna start with stay for a period of time. Here. Yes, good. Just putting up a hand signal. I want him to understand what he's doing. That was like a one second stay, right? And then he got something he liked. All right, good. Right now when I say yes, I'm just focused on rewarding him. We'll work on the release as we go here. Good boy. One, two, three. Four, five, right? Five seconds. Yes. Good. Good boy. And this is really keeping his attention here. I love it. And let's see if we can get like a 10 second stay while we just stand really close to him just to make sure that he can show that he understands what that means. Stay. I'm gonna start to say stay now. Here. Yes. You could hear someone was singing in the background and everything there, and he looked, got his attention there. It's one of the reasons to get outside and train a lot. You don't know what's going to happen. And that was indeed actually a distraction, albeit premature to my lesson, but he passed the test nonetheless. Good boy. So I'm giving him a nice extra long tug session here. Good, okay. That's enough. Let go. Uh-uh. Obviously our let go is a little clunky right now, but that's something I'm gonna to continue to work on because if I can get a nice rhythm there of tug, let go, and make him earn like two and three second bits of tug of war, then I think that's gonna be an effective way to reinforce a lot of the behaviors that I want him to repeat. Leave it alone. Leave it alone, sir. Sit. Stay. Here, look at me. Yes. Good. Nice work. So that was really good. That was a nice longer stay. Let's go ahead and change up a variable now. And let me walk away from George and we'll see how he does. I don't care if he stands or sits. Right now, if he wants to hold that, that's fine. Stay. Yes. You see what I did? I just took a half step away and I didn't pause at the end. In other words, I'm focusing on the distance, not the length of time. Sit. Too much. Stay. Yes. So take a step back, make it easier. Good boy. Now you could use treats for this. I'm just using the tug toy because he's really into it and it's got his attention. I love training with play with a dog that's willing. Here, easy, sit, stay. Yes, good. So that time I got two steps in. This is how it starts. I mean, really, really basic. Let go, hey, leave it. Good, better on let go, sit. Stay. Yes, did you see that? It's like he looked like he was thinking about getting up, but I wanted to intervene before he broke there. You're doing great, George. It sounded like Tony the Tiger, didn't it? I'm gonna change up my strategy a little bit here because this is a little clunky feeling right now. And that's always how it feels when you're training a dog with virtually no training at all. Since it's really challenging to get him to let go and since he's way more into play than treats, I still wanna continue to use play as a reward but I think I'm gonna go for multiple easy successes in a row and then give him a reward so he starts to get it a bit quicker. In other words, I'm not gonna reward after every single success. Let's see if that gives us some traction. Yes, good, very good. So there, I was able to get three successes in a row with him while I walked away. Good boy, come on. And now I'll give him a good 10 seconds of tug. <laughs> good, all right. Hey, nice. Whenever he lets go, even if unintentionally, that, that's always good. Stay. 
going to pause. Here? Yes, good. I'm doing here to mean look at me. He responds really well to that. So I'll use those interchangeably a lot. But I was even able to pause at the end of my line there when I said stay. So that's really exciting. He's starting to understand stay means stay even when I increase the distance between us. Can you give me a sit? Stay. Here. Yes, good, very good. I had planned to do a dedicated lesson to stay with distractions, which I'm still gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna use this as, as the distraction, so that should be interesting. But we did have some organic distractions. You saw him look at a distraction over here, one over there, and then he still made the decision to acknowledge me, and that's what I was really rewarding. After a lengthy stay for a period of time, and with distance, multiple successes in a row, all for one tug session. And he's made it clear that this toy is probably gonna be the biggest distraction of all. So let's see if I can get him to stay while I taunt him with his favorite toy. He's gotta be able to stay for this before I can expect him to stay for other more serious distractions like small animals or anything else. I'm gonna stay close to him for this one. Stay. Ah. Almost. Stay. Yes, I didn't even set it on the ground. When I set it on the ground the first time, that was too much. So I'm gonna make it even easier. I'm gonna be generous about rewarding here. Okay, yep, we're back on, buddy, that's right. Easy, oh boy, jeez. Let go. Hey, easy. Sit. Stay. Very similar to the leave it, look at me combo, but we're going to use that as a base more or less. Here. Yes, good boy. Very good. I'm gradually making this toy more and more distracting by bringing more and more movement to it. Stay. No matter how much he wants something, he must learn to stay. Ah, too much. See, one drop was fine, then I threw it up. He's like, whoa, I gotta get that stay. And by the way, there is a consequence to his behavior right here. The consequence is he doesn't get the rope toy. I don't need to be physical with him. I don't need to physically punish him to communicate, hey, I'd rather you not do that. We're trying to appeal to his brain. Remember, we taught yes and no yesterday. Stay. Two drops that time. Here, look at me. Stay. Yes. Okay, good, nice work, very good. Her. And you see how willing he is to be compliant, to put off playing with the toy, as long as he knows he gets a really good quality play session in exchange for his restraint. <laughs> Stay. Here, look at me. Here, Give me, I want, you can do better. Here. No. Stay. Look at me. Yes, good boy, very good. A lot of moments. I could have rewarded many moments before when I actually did. I did push him a little bit. That's because he's such a bright dog though. I know that he's got it in him. I would probably work slower if I had more time with him, but I'm trying to kind of work right at the limits of what he's capable of. And he seems to be a very capable dog. Stay, I'm gonna walk away. Stay. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Look at me, here, I want better eye contact. George, here. George, yes, okay, good boy. I mean, I got a few glances again, like I mentioned, I am trying to get a lot out of him, but that was pretty good. I mean, he stayed for a period of time. 
He stayed with distance. He stayed while I used his favorite thing in the world at the moment as a distraction. And I was able to get him to look up at me two or three times, albeit I'd prefer he would give me a little bit better focus on my face when I ask for it. But there's a little bit of time to work on that. And at the beginning of this lesson, it seemed to me that he didn't really have any concept at all of what stay was. Stay. Look at me. Yeah, good, good boy, very good. Okay, I think that's a good place to, I'll let him go for it at this point, because that was really good. I got extra excited there because I was able to get him to walk in the other direction, uh, away from the distraction, which is always a plus when you can get that. I mean, that's a lot of self-control from George, because you can see he loves this toy. But all the more reason he's got to earn this, you know, with things this special, virtually any toy with him is this special. You want to only break them out when you're doing training sessions with them. Doesn't mean they can't have various chews and things like that, but a tug toy or a frisbee or a ball, keep those special. So that's kind of a crash course on how you teach state, but he still needs to experience staying in a whole bunch of different places over the next year or two to really, really understand that stay means stay no matter what. We're gonna go take a break in the shade right now. We're gonna let George enjoy some screensaver time and just check out the various things that happen around him. And we're gonna talk about the big elephant in the room. And by elephant in the room, I mean George, the pit bull type dog. And you might wonder why I say pit bull type. That's because pit bull isn't actually one breed. It's really an umbrella term for a group of breeds or any mixed breeds that come out looking just like that. Now, if you're wondering about George's exact breed makeup, we tested his DNA and he's 70% American Pitbull Terrier and 30% Staffordshire Terrier, which makes him a bona fide Pitbull type dog. Dogs like George have a controversial reputation. They were originally bred to be bait dogs for bull and bear fighting. And as if that weren't intense and horrific enough, to this day, they're exploited for dog fighting all around the world. Besides that, just look at him. I mean, he is a very intense looking dog. And those are all perfectly understandable reasons to be wary of pit bull type dogs. Can dogs that look like this be very dangerous to people? Absolutely. Does that mean that all or even most of them are? No way. But regardless of how friendly they are, dogs like George are very powerful and they're not given second chances. That's why training George is absolutely critical. Now, with George's clear desire to play, I wanna make sure to incorporate a ton of play into my training in order to really get him looking forward to our training sessions. But there's still some problems with his fetch. I mean, he'll chase it. Sometimes he brings it back, other times he doesn't. Right now, I wanna work on fetch for a few minutes with him and see if we can make some progress on getting him to bring the toy all the way back to me. I'm ready for my toy now, Bree. She's been hiding it, because you know he's gonna get locked on and focused to that toy the moment it comes here. There we go. I think it took him a second to realize I had it. I mean, you can see, look at the intensity in this toy. He's really ready to follow it. Okay, let me get him warmed up here. Good boy. Come on. Occasionally I'll hear from someone like, Zach, I love that you reward with toys and I wish I could do that with my dog, but he's just way too intense to reward with toys. And I suspect you're dealing with something like George. It does take a minute here to get some traction. That's why I'm showing you exactly how it is to work with a completely untrained dog. How am I ever gonna teach him to let go of something when his grip and his strength is like this? If your dog is this obsessed with a toy, then you have the most powerful training tool of all. But you know, I'm not saying it's easy to polish up your workflow with your dog so that they understand the rules and how to interact with the toy, but that's what I'm here for. Good. I'm keeping my throws pretty short intentionally here because I don't want him to pull me over. And secondly, it's more about getting the number of successful reps in than it is about the distance I can throw and have him return the toy. I really want him to understand the fundamentals of chase the toy, pick it up, bring it back in a straight line, let go and eagerly await the next throw. Now, occasionally, if he's not coming back to me as readily as I like, I might, or even in a case like that where he veers off, I may encourage him just ever so slightly with the lead to come back to me. Now don't confuse that with harsh physical punishment techniques that some trainers might use when teaching a dog to walk on a leash, for example. This is simply the equivalent of me going up to a three or four year old child and saying, come on, we gotta go over here. Can't stay there all day. So I'm not popping the lead, but I'm definitely giving him some physical encouragement. The most important thing to me is that he's not perceiving it as aversive. You can see he's in a quite a jolly mood at the moment. The thing I'm learning about George is he definitely needs some time to be reminded, which makes perfect sense. 
I mean, think about it. When you graduate from one grade to the next, they kind of have a review of where you left off the year before. It's kind of what we need to do in our lessons with our own dogs. And remember, he's just now learning that humans can communicate with him in this way. So it's a relatively new concept. Oftentimes when you're low like this, you're more inviting to a dog. Good boy. Good. Notice I'm not making him sit. I'm not making him do a lot of things in exchange for that toy. I'm going to let him try to see how he's bringing it closer to me. I love that. I want to keep that going rather than reaching in for it, in other words. Because in the beginning of the lesson, he was veering off, but I want him to be like, hey, here, take this, take this. Come on, let's go. Good boy, yeah! Look at that, right to me. Let go immediately, yes. Come on, let's go. Yeah, good boy, yes. See, I'm really trying to Help him understand that when he plays the game right, I'm gonna give him what he wants. Come on, buddy. Look at that, right to my hand. How about that? Let go. Let go. Oh yeah, you forgot that one. All right, I'll let him think about it. But that was a nice little burst right there. So he's making progress. Good boy, come on. Come on. Come on, George. George, there we go, getting low really helped there. Come on. Let go. Yeah, good job, buddy, I'm proud of you. And I think we'll end on that note and we'll keep working on this. But you can see why fetch is such an important part of having a dog like this. You have to be able to get their energy out on your terms, your schedule, and in a way that really satisfies a dog in the most basic way. Let's talk about what's happening right now because I am such a proud mom. I'm so excited. Yeah, it looks like inertia and, oh gosh, he's in the house, unattended. George! Indy, are you not gonna get in on this? Okay, she's like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'll let the youngsters go out of here. As of yesterday, the last time they played together that I knew of, Inertia was still not so sure about George because big, fast dogs like him are not always her favorite playmates. To be clear, Inertia is slow to warm up to a dog like George. He's big, he's strong, he comes on kind of strong, though he's pretty good with dogs. And Inertia doesn't play with just any old dog, right? But I was watching her body language. I saw that she was getting particularly curious about George. And she had this like twinkle in her eyes that was basically like, you know, I think I might be interested in playing. And then they just started taking off being dogs and playing chase with each other. Just yesterday, Inertia was kind of telling him off a little bit. She's like, yo, I don't play like that. You need to back off. She was giving a measured corrections, but that is dogs being dogs at the end of the day. And every dog has a different personality. And Inertia is the kind of dog that if you just give her the time to warm up to another dog, as long as they're good with dogs, then she'll do a mean game of chase. Pretty sure she's almost undefeated in the game of chase. Kona gave her a run for her money though, huh? Ah! <laughs> Meanwhile, Indy just likes to hang out over there. As Indy's gotten older, she's discovered that with younger, faster dogs, one of the best games she can play is bark at them and sometimes they run. And so it's kind of, I've noticed like her old dog version of Chase. When they get close, she'll just bark. I think it's very really cute. <laughs> I think she made George tired. <laughs> Inertia, you win. Look at that. Settle. Good boy, George. <laughs> Taking a break, huh? Thanks, Inertia. Good job. And so as playing was winding down, you know, you could see Inertia was like, hey, okay, I'm done, George. And George was like, are you sure I want to keep playing? In moments like that, I like to intervene to back Inertia up a little bit so she doesn't feel like she has to control the situation completely. I mean, it's important to be a partner with your dog too on matters like this. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, how is his head this big? I know, it is huge. It's like holding a bowling ball, like yeah, what is happening? Yeah, with teeth. What a good boy. You're very good. Yeah, yeah, you are. We're done playing with the girls though. I don't think the girls want to play with you anymore, mm -hmm. Hanson. <laughs> A lot happened today with George. I guess his first lesson with lie down could have gone smoother. He did it, I was pretty proud of him, but yeah, we definitely struggled at times there to connect with each other, but that makes a lot of sense too, because 
We're just learning how to communicate. Those first many days are devoted to that. His let go though, when it's good, it's good. But when he's not letting go, he is not letting go easily. So we definitely struggled with that today. I'm gonna continue to work with him on that. I don't know how far I'm gonna get. I mean, truthfully at this point, I don't even know if I'm gonna get him to do a reliable let go on a regular basis. I'm pretty sure I can get there though. I think so. Bree and I were both super delighted by Inertia and George playing with each other. They seem to have really hit it off today. So it was really nice to see Inertia get a little bit more confident with a bigger, stronger dog like that. What'd you think? Hi. I was so excited about Inertia and George. That is 100,000% the highlight of my day. It was amazing. I mean, I get it. I'm sensitive too, and Inertia's a little sensitive. I am just really proud of her when she is confident and she makes a new friend, and I'm really happy that George made a new friend too. Can you see how he's laying right now? Hang on. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He is like so comfortable. I have never seen a dog be so comfortable on a bed. I know, I mean, he's happy to go in that crate and just pass out all night. Well, we'll see, it's only night two. That's how he was last night, but it was his first night. He may have just been exhausted with all the activity, but we did a lot today too. So if I'm doing my job, he will be tired and he will go to sleep. He's like twisted up like a pretzel, so I'm just trying to show you guys. Yeah, I know, he's goofy. I think we'll introduce him as a hippopotamus mix. Yes, I believe house hippo is the technical medical term for is it? a pit bull. I, so I've Oh, that makes a lot of sense. They're very hippopotamus-like. House hippo. I don't anticipate seeing you guys overnight, but if I do, I mean, I'll be here. I will show you if he does anything at all. He's and changed I know a lot since yesterday, so he might have changed a lot since last night, too. You think he's changed a lot? Yes. So he's changed a lot in what way? I think he's coming out of his shell. He was a little more boisterous, a little more rambunctious, like slightly harder to handle. Yep. And I think it's just cause he's like, cool, awesome. Like he's getting more comfortable. He's not like, where am I? And so I'm just curious what the future holds. I don't know. I mean, honestly, he's snoring right now. So I think you might be good overnight, but we'll see. But in real time, we haven't even put out the adoption, like that he's available for adoption publicly yep. yet. I guess we need to get on that because we do need to get him a home. We love rescue dogs and we've worked with a lot of rescue dogs, but actually getting them adopted is an art. I, can, I have friends who do it and I can tell it's not as easy as being like, here's a dog who's perfect and amazing because there's a million of those everywhere and so uh that's not necessarily our area of expertise so i hope that we do a good job i really right. george deserves a home he's he does amazing. he's a good dog indy wanted to say good night to you guys say good night indy she's really handling george very well she's amazing oh yeah we need to talk about her measured corrections i know i didn't yeah. think that we i was even <laughs> going to introduce george to her just because she's old gracefully i mean she look she acts 12. she look at her she's a gymnast She's fine. She is amazing. Um, yeah, Indy is not slowing down. She can throw down with a pit bull type dog any day. She loves playing. Oh yeah, she's always been a very good socializer. I'm very proud of her. Night inertia, can you give me a hug? Oh, okay. She's too tall. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Good night. Okay, good job. <laughs> good morning, sir. This is the start of day three for us. Right, you wanna go outside? Oh, we gotta work on stay at the crate later, don't we? Oh my goodness, handsome fellow. Oh. Why do you pee like that? Who pees like that? Good morning, it was a really peaceful, uneventful night. George did fantastic overnight. Him sleeping in the crate so far after two nights, it doesn't seem like something we need improvements on. He does that just fine. I think as long as I continue to work with him during the day, give him exercise, a lot of mental stimulation, he's gonna pass out and be perfectly content. I still can't help but think he's really enjoying the different setting. I mean, the shelter environment can be tough on a lot of dogs and he really seems like he's enjoying the peace and quiet to a degree. And it's just really satisfying to see a dog like him be content and happy. So I just want to continue to improve that for him. Don't we all, right? And he's continuing to do well with going in his crate. Of course, I'm throwing those sweet potato treats in there to get him to go involuntarily, but he doesn't try to rush out or anything, so that's good. 
I'm going to go get ready now while you hang out, okay? Go to trynom.com slash Zach and get 50% off a two-week trial of Nom Nom. Click thumbs up for Shelter Dogs. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you click the bell to get notified every time we post a new episode, too. Get a copy of both of my books and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and even Facebook. We'll see you next time.